Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to carry out a dihybrid cross. In a previous video we looked at monogenic crosses and remember that monogenic crosses involve the inheritance of one gene. In this video we're looking at how to investigate the inheritance of two different genes at the same time. This is called dihybrid inheritance. Now before we look at dihybrid inheritance I want to look again at the formation of gametes. I'm showing you here a pair of homologous chromosomes and we've already seen that homologous chromosomes contain the same genes. The gene I'm showing here has two alleles. As you can see this individual is heterozygous for this gene so they have one copy of the dominant allele and one copy of the recessive allele. Now when this individual forms gametes by meiosis Half of the gametes will contain the dominant allele and the other half of the gametes will contain the recessive allele. Ok, I'm showing you here another gene on a different pair of homologous chromosomes. This gene also has two alleles and this individual is also heterozygous for this gene. Now when gametes are formed we have four different combinations of these alleles. This is summarised by Mendel's law of independent assortment. This states that either allele in a pair can combine randomly with either allele in another pair. Now there's a key fact here that I need to make clear. This applies if the two genes are on different pairs of homologous chromosomes. Scientists say that genes on different pairs of homologous chromosomes are unlinked genes. In a later video we'll be looking at genes which are linked. But in this video we're only looking at unlinked genes. In other words genes which are on different pairs of homologous chromosomes. Now when Mendel investigated dihybrid inheritance he looked at pea plants. The characteristics he investigated were seed shape and seed colour. And the genes for seed shape and seed colour are on different pairs of homologous chromosomes. The shape of pea seeds can be either round or wrinkled and the colour of pea seeds can be either yellow or green. In peas seed shape is controlled by two alleles. The allele for round seeds is dominant and the allele for wrinkled seeds is recessive. Seed colour is also controlled by two alleles. The allele for yellow seeds is dominant and the allele for green seeds is recessive. First Mendel crossed pure breeding seeds which were round and yellow with pure breeding seeds which were wrinkled and green. And remember that pure breeding means homozygous for the alleles. So the pure breeding round yellow seeds have the genotype capital R capital R capital Y capital Y. And the pure breeding wrinkled green seeds have the genotype lowercase r lowercase r lowercase y lowercase y. The gametes will have one gene for seed shape and one gene for seed colour. So the gametes produced by the round yellow seeds have the alleles capital R capital Y and the gametes produced by the wrinkled green seeds have the alleles lowercase r lowercase y. Here's the Punnett square showing the cross. All of the F1 offspring have the genotype capital R lowercase r capital Y lowercase y and all the F1 offspring have the phenotype round yellow seeds. Ok, next Mendel crossed two of the F1 generation. Now in this case the parents are heterozygous for the genes for both seed shape and seed colour. As we saw before Mendel's law of independent assortment says that either allele in a pair can combine randomly with either allele in another pair. So this means that we can make four types of gametes and I'm showing those here. Now fertilisation is a random process. Any gamete from one pea plant can fuse with any gamete from another pea plant. So here's the Punnett square showing the possible outcomes from this cross. Now in this cross we get nine plants with round yellow seeds, three plants with round green seeds, three plants with wrinkled yellow seeds and one plant with wrinkled green seeds. Now this ratio of 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 is typical of a dihybrid cross involving parents which are heterozygous for two genes. 
as long as those two genes are on different pairs of homologous chromosomes. In other words, they are unlinked genes. However, the ratio that we actually achieve from a dihybrid cross may not be exactly 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. For example, if the number of offspring is small, then the ratio may differ. And if the genes are linked, then we will get a totally different ratio. So in practice, we normally use a statistical test to see how close our ratio is to the expected ratio. And we'll be looking at the chi-squared test in a later video. In the next video, we look at autosomal linkage.